Now this game's heating up. Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. Today I have my first Bilgewater deck profile to share, and that is Maokai Nautilus Tossing. This deck is very popular, very fun, and most importantly, very powerful. I want to run through my card choices, explain why they're in the deck, and give you the knowledge to pilot the deck yourself. Also, the code for the deck will be in the description below. For those of you who don't know, I got Master Tier in the beta, even peaking top 50 in NA. For the rest of you that already watch my content, welcome back and enjoy this deck profile. These waters are mine. So the overall point of the deck is to use Maokai and his support cards to toss the bottom cards out of your deck. Doing this enough will put your deck in a deep state, which amps up Nautilus and his support cards. Once you've achieved going deep, play Nautilus and a couple of sea monsters, you've essentially won the game with the insane amount of pressure and resources this deck has. So now let's get into the deck profile. First I start off with three Dark Beasts. He's a very strong 1-1 that when he sees another ally dies, he becomes a 3-3. I think uh, Hapless Aristocrat is a pretty good replacement for him if you don't run Dark Beasts or don't have the wild cards to craft in, because I think you start with some Hapless Aristocrats. Dreg Dredgers is a really important one drop. So when he's summoned, he tosses the three cards from the bottom of your deck. Getting a couple of these off is extremely valuable early so that you can get into deep state faster. Next for the two cost cards, I run two Arachnoid Horror because he's just the best two drop that Bilgewater and Shadow Isles can muster up. There's another strong contender if you want to run Hired Gun instead, but I think Arachnoid Horror can test the board a little bit better. Uh, and can trade up against some 3 HP uh, creatures. We also have Glimpse Beyond, which is really good. Kills an ally, you draw 2, that gets you a little bit closer to Deep State. Next we have Thorny Toad. He is another toss card, and he's a little bit of a heal for your Nexus in case you're fighting some really aggressive decks. Thorny Toad can come in clutch there. Next we have Dead Bloom Wanderer, yet another toss card, and he has Lifesteal. I think his stat line is a little weak, but he's tossing and he can gain you back a little bit of Nexus HP if you, you know, take some damage early. Next we have Jawl Hunters. 3 mana 4, 1 with Challenger. When I'm summoned, create a random sea monster in hand. Now the sea monsters are basically the Nautilus support cards and this is what you're going to be playing around as your late game win condition. Having Challenger means he can pull elusive units, he can pull champions that the enemies don't want you to kill and on summon he creates a sea monster in hand. Now they are pretty flexible and like I said if you have Nautilus on the board they are a win condition uh, in and of themselves. So he's a really good card. Next we have of course Maokai, uh, our first champion. The first time you play another ally each round you toss two from the bottom of your deck and summon a sapling. A sapling is a 2-1 with challenger and ephemeral so he can you know harass some enemy minions, he can grab some champions if they're already damaged uh, pretty good card overall, honestly. Maokai's level up condition, if you've tossed enough, also tosses the entire opponent's deck except for four cards that are non-champions. So Maokai is a secondary win condition to play around. Very, very strong. Uh, I hardly ever resolve it. I usually win with Nautilus first, but you cannot sleep on Maokai's effect. Next we got Riptide, which is a uh, non-conditional removal if you have Nautilus on the board. So essentially what that means is no matter what effect the enemy has, it, if they have a last breath, it, you know, it doesn't matter because they're going to be shuffled back into the opponent's deck. Very strong if you have Nautilus. If you don't, it's just a four mana stun an enemy, which in a desperate situation, you could save you from a bunch of damage. So that's why we only run two of them. Next we have Salvage which is basically Glimpse Beyond, but you don't have to target your own minion, and you get to toss two. So yeah, simple, toss two, draw two. Pretty good refill. I think it's a little expensive, but uh, it's okay. We run it at three because it is resource generation. And next I run two of each sea monster, minus the eight cost ones. We got two beasts below, two abyssal eye, two Devour of the Depths, and two Shipwreck Quarter. Now, I run two of each because I think three will clog the hand too much. You don't want to see multiple copies of sea monsters, and you don't want multiple sea monsters in your hand early because of, you know, how expensive they are. 
they can easily clutter your hand and make you not be able to play out certain cards because you just don't draw into them. You're drawing all the sea monsters instead. Running two of them also means they have a high chance of being tossed, which is a good thing actually because let's look at Nautilus. When I level up, copy tossed allies that cost four plus back into your deck. So like let's say Beast Below, Abyssal Eye, Devourer of the Depths, and Shipwreck Hoarder all get tossed. It's okay. Nautilus puts them right back in your deck and then if you're holding a Glimpse Beyond or a Salvage, you can draw into them immediately. So I think two just makes sense. It makes the deck less clunky and it makes the deck really uh, play out smoothly. That being said, here we go. There's the Nautilus Wind Condition. I already looked at him a little bit. But yeah, he is a 0-12, but when he levels up, he becomes a 13-13, and all of your sea monsters cost 3 less. So, <laughs> it makes you spam these really big minions that are just win conditions. Now, another card to uh, keep in mind and maybe put in is the last sea monster. Oop, I don't know what I just did. Citrus Courier? He's trying to sneak his way into the deck, you see that? Sea monster. Alright. So the last card to take into consideration, not Lure of Depths, I think this card's bad. Uh, Terror of the Tides? Yeah, Terror of the Tides. 8 mana, 6, 5. He's a win condition uh, by himself. Give enemies 2, 0, and all sea monsters have Fearsome. I think he's a little bit overkill, and he's a little bit expensive, even with the Nautilus uh, price cut. So I just can't fit him in right now. If I would, I'd probably take out... Both of the hard Riptides, maybe, put into Terror. Um, maybe the Arachnoid Horror can be cut to 2 with Jaw Hunters at 2, and then that can make room for Terror Tides. There's some changes that you can make, but I just wanted to provide a good foundation for the deck. I encourage players to mess with the numbers, you know, put in little twists, whatever they like. You know, this is by no means a perfect deck. It can be experimented with, and I think that's the most enjoyable part of card games, actually. So yeah, that about wraps it up for the deck profile. Now, here's a live commentary game so you can see how the deck plays out. I'll be giving context of why I'm playing certain cards, and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, looks like we're fighting Darius and Katarina. I'm not sure what this deck is trying to do, but it's probably something aggressive. So, of course we want to replace our sea monsters and try to keep our early game so we can contest the board. It's actually a pretty good hand. He's going first, though. Yeah, it's an aggressive deck. I'm going to take three damage for free on turn one. We can heal it back though with Wander. I think we should follow up with Arachnoid Horror. Yeah. We get a free 3 damage back and we can block next turn. Jaw Hunters is also going to be really good on turn 4. Okay, ready. Yeah, we'll block here. And then I think we play Dead Bloom Wander. Ah, I see. I don't really want him to win this trade, so I think I'm okay with stunning. There we go. It's one of the rare times he used Riptide. He also burnt one mana. So now let us play Bark Beast first. And then I will pick what 3 drop I want to play depending on what he plays. nothing. He doesn't want to play anything? Well, I kind of want to play Jaw Hunters. Danger paid. Destruction feeds my ah. Round start. Okay, well I'm going to try to kill her now. So let's grab her with Challenger. Since he will die, that will buff my Bark Beast, so I put him on the right. Play Arachnoid Horror there. One Elixir of Iron cannot protect her, so this should be a clean kill. He would have to use two spells to save her. 
Nice. Better than eating. We got optimal damage too because of Bark Beast. For an aggressive deck, he's not playing too aggressive past turn one. Let me show yeah, that's a staple aggressive card. Alright. I think I want to play Dead Bloom Wanderer here. And we can play Thorny Toad as well. War Mason, reporting for duty. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna deal four damage to me. Make the Empire proud. But I got some I got some heals on board. So hopefully they can help stabilize the bleeding. We'll trade here. We'll trade here. We'll trade there. Yep. This looks good. That's a little annoying. Not the worst thing in the world, but it's a little annoying. Alright, let's play Thorny Toad, then we'll play Beast Below. This is the one that we got for free off of Jaw Hunters. So that card's coming in clutch, giving us, you know, a resource to play. Mine is the hand of Noxus. Your command, uh, not General too Darius. worried about Darius. Let's just attack with everything. Because if he blocks with Darius, then I can just block with my 1-4. Yeah. This is getting in a lot of damage. <laughs> By a lot, I guess I mean two. Routes closed. This is fine. This is actually pretty good. Now we can play Nautilus as well. Oh, I can't wait. Echoes from the deep. Sweet, now we just have a big tank on the board. So it's gonna be hard for Darius Delish. to punch through him. Hmm. Uh, reporting in? Yep. My turn. Let's have Thorny to block here. I'll have Nautilus block there. No matter what, I'm taking two damage from her because she's going to attack if I play nothing, and she's going to survive damage if I block here. So I might as well block and do a little bit of damage to her. He's pretty low on resources, so all I have to do is keep out resourcing him. Strength above all. That's going to level up Darius, huh? Look what you did. Blood for Noxus! Okay. Um... It might... It might just be... A Riptide turn, huh? Nah, I think it's I think it's too early. I can use Riptide on defense. It's not like he can use Deny or anything since he's not running Ionia. But I think it's better to get some minions on the board. Or use Glimpse on Thorny Toad. But then I won't be able to use Shipwreck Order. How close am I to deep? Eight? It's a little tough. This is a really hard turn, I think. Uh, I'm going to Bark Beast first no matter what, so let's just do that and see what he plays. I see, nothing. Okay, let's play this guy as well. I still have Riptide next turn for Darius, so... I feel like I'm in an okay spot still. Even if it looks scary. He just took the damage. Alright.
Yo, five to all units. It's just AoE. Boom. Everyone dies. The storm approaches. Okay. Other allies have five plus power. Oh, oh geez. Okay, he's giving everyone overwhelm. But he already has it. No, he doesn't. The might uh, might affect war off. I think I want to glimpse now. Yeah, this buffs my bark beast and gives me a couple more cards to work with. I can use this Riptide instead. This one is currently my Nautilus, so I would be losing him. So let's Riptide this guy. Then I will block here, here, and here. This way I only take two damage. I actually survived that turn. Summon three vicious plate worms, which are all sea monsters, right? Alright, this is what we do. We do keel breaker first. And then we play plate worms. And then we just win. I was also two away from deep. But this just goes to show that the deck doesn't need to get deep to win. It has such a strong like early game stabilization. I was fighting a pure aggro deck and still managed to survive the early game. And that about wraps it up for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out since I'm still trying to grow. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. I also stream on Twitch. The link to that and my other socials are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters.